Chapter 22 Danny's shift had felt never-ending, her entire body ached. She wasn't looking forward to having to cook dinner but it was her night, Mark had cooked the night before, so she knew she'd have to do something. First, she had to pick up Mark. She pulled into Zach's driveway, killed the engine, and stared at the front door. She knew she should go in, or at least to the door, but getting out of the car seemed like so much work. After a minute or two, maybe three, she got out and went to the door. She knocked and while she stood waiting for an answer, she glanced around. Zach's yard was well cared for. Not grass that needed a lot of attention but still, it showed that he paid attention to it. The door opened, and Donnie turned back to find Zach standing in front of her looking surprised. Donnie, come on in. He stepped back. I thought it was someone else. She frowned and stepped through the door. Were you expecting someone? No, I was expecting you any time but I wasn't expecting you to knock. He turned toward the rear of the house and she followed. Donnie stopped and stared at him a moment. Was he really expecting her to walk into his house without an invitation? What? Zach turned. As long as Mark is here, you're welcome. No need to knock, just come on in. Are you sure? She blinked, trying to process. I'm sure. He waited until she'd moved closer then spoke again, his voice low. If I thought you'd go along with it, I'd tell you you're welcome here any time, day or night, with or without Mark, but I don't think you're ready to hear that. She blinked at him again. Her brain was too tired to register what he meant for a moment. She scowled while she tried to figure it out. Then she remembered the kiss, the heat deep in her belly, the ache in her chest when he'd left. Now she knew what he meant. I'm tired, I still need to get home and make dinner. She shook her head. Where's Mark? He's in the playroom, but come in here a minute. Did he just say playroom? What? Did he have children here often? This wasn't making much sense to her, but she was too tired to argue about it, and followed him into the kitchen. Mark said you're tired and that it's not his night to cook. I like that you have him cooking by the way, so I made dinner. He lifted the lid off a skillet on the stove, to reveal what looked like chicken cacciatore. Her mouth watered at the scent, and her stomach rumbled. Habit told her to say no, get Mark and take him home but something kept her from saying it. Relief that she didn't have to figure anything out or cook washed over her, and she nearly burst into tears, but she managed to hold it in. Thank you. Donnie let her head fall forward. She leaned into him, so the top of her head pressed into his chest as she tried to compose herself. He wrapped his arms around her and just held her for a few seconds. When she'd composed herself again, she took a deep breath and picked up her head. Thank you. Where's Mark? Zach pointed. First door on the left. Donnie headed down the hall and turned where directed and stopped, unable to believe what she was seeing. The whole room was filled with Lego figurines. It looked like some kind of shrine or museum, and it was more than a little strange. But that wasn't what kept her attention. It was the table in the middle of the room with the little blocks scattered over it, and their son bent over whatever he was building, totally engrossed in the blocks. He didn't even realize she was there. She turned to go say something to Zach and found him standing a few feet away, watching her. What? She shook her head and pointed with her thumb. It's my playroom. I've had it for a while now. It shows. How long has he been like that? Hours. Zach peeked around the corner then looked back at her. I made him stop for lunch and we went outside for a while, but he's been in there most of the day, totally enthralled. Donnie turned to watch her boy in what she knew he would consider the greatest place on earth, except, maybe Legoland. He's fine for a while, Zach said, turning back toward the main room. Come sit down, put your feet up and rest. I don't know. 
She knew once she put her feet up and stopped moving it was going to be hard to get moving again, and she still had to take Mark home and get him in bed. I do. Dinner is close but still needs about 10 minutes. There's no point in you standing around waiting. Zack steered her to his recliner and with his hands on her shoulders, pushed her down to sit. There. Relax. He hit the release on the side, and the footrest popped up. She sank into the plush cushions, and couldn't keep her body from relaxing. Donnie looked up to say something, but he was gone. She was too tired to find him to complain. She let her eyes drift shut. Mom. Something shook her. Mom. Donnie opened her eyes to find Mark standing beside her, looking down. She blinked and tried to remember where she was. Dad says dinner's ready. Oh. Yeah. Zach's house. Dinner. She hadn't intended to fall asleep, but the chair had been so comfortable, and she was so tired, she must have dozed off. Donnie sat up, pushing the footrest down as she went, then stood. She could only hope she hadn't been snoring. Can you tell him I'll be there in a minute? I just need to use the bathroom. Okay. Mark turned and went back to the kitchen while she stumbled her way to the bathroom down the hall. After using the facilities, she washed her hands and splashed water on her face as she tried to wake up. It helped some. Back in the kitchen, she found Zach had already served everyone, and he had Mark sitting at the table while he waited for her. What do you want to drink? Water's fine. She went to the table where all three plates sat. Which one's mine? Whichever you would like. They're all alike, sit where you want. Donnie pulled out a chair and sat. She looked down at the plate in front of her. It smelled amazing, but she was waiting for them all to be seated. How was your day, she asked. The best. Mark started talking about what he had done and how he had spent his day, detailing for her all the things he'd built, and she tried to listen but soon found herself nodding and making the appropriate noises while he chattered. Zack set a glass of water in front of her, and she looked up at him with a smile as he took his own seat. Once they were all there and Zack picked up his fork, she did the same. Some people thought it was odd but she'd been taught that when you're a guest, you don't eat until your host does. Despite what he'd said earlier, she still felt like a guest in Zach's house. All through dinner she listened to Mark, asked questions when she could get a word in edgewise, and stole glances at Zach, wondering what he had done other than have the most amazing room possible to make Mark so happy. Her boy had always been one to talk but man, this was a lot even for him. By the time they finished eating, Mark seemed to be winding down. Donnie picked up both her plate and his and carried them to the sink. I hate to eat and run, but I need to get Mark showered and in bed so I can shower and get in bed. We have another early morning tomorrow. No problem. If it would make things easier for you, stuff his clothes in a bag and bring him in his pajamas. He's welcome to shower here too. Thank you. But I prefer not to feed him in his pajamas. I'll feed him too, I did this morning. Donnie frowned. She thought Mark had cereal before they'd left this morning. She looked at the boy for a second. I told him I had cereal, but Dad said I could have pancakes too. That explained it. Mark loved pancakes. If you don't mind, it would make it a little easier in the mornings. If I minded, I wouldn't have offered. Bring him. I can help. You don't have to do it all anymore. He stepped closer then froze as if he changed his mind at the last minute. Donnie hoped for just a second he would wrap his arms around her and hold her, even if it was just for a minute or two. Her mother had helped where she could, but once she'd moved to Prescott, it had been difficult for Donnie to manage sometimes. Thank you. Do you know if you'll always be this shift, or will you do overnight sometimes too? I'm sure I'll have nights sometime but I don't know when. 
She glanced at Mark. I don't know what I'll do then. I do. He can stay here. He can have the guest bedroom. We'll figure out how to make it his. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Stop asking. He leaned over and placed a chaste kiss on her forehead. Take him home and put him to bed. Then go yourself, you look like you're asleep on your feet. Apparently, I was asleep in your living room. I didn't mind but next time I'll give you my bed instead, it's much more comfortable. His words were innocent, but what they did to her was far from it. Sparks shot through her and heat pooled low in her body. An image flashed into her mind, one she couldn't shake as quickly as she wanted. Her in his bed, naked and not alone. It really had been too long. By the time Danny's days off rolled around, she felt little better than a walking zombie. She had to admit, Zack keeping Mark had made things easier, since she didn't feel like she had to get him up in time to be dressed and fed before dropping him off. It meant she got to sleep about 30 minutes later every morning, and though it didn't seem like much, it was huge to her. It had been a rough week, and the extra 30 minutes a day sleep, along with Zack having dinner ready each day when she arrived to pick up Mark, had made it survivable. She'd known juggling a full-time, 12-hour-a-day job and parenting a 9-year-old wouldn't be easy, but she hadn't expected it to be this bad. She could only hope it would get easier. She had spent most of her shift yesterday fantasizing about being able to sleep until she woke on her own, then having a lazy morning while she got the laundry washed. She hoped Mark would cooperate and do the chores she asked, like picking up his bedroom and gathering his laundry. She fell into bed after her last shift, wondering what the next day would bring. She was asleep almost as soon as her head hit the pillow. Donnie was surprised when Zack asked to take Mark to the park, and even more so when he'd invited her along. An afternoon at the park could be fun, but it wasn't what she'd planned. She had a list as long as her arm she needed to get done while she had the time, and wasn't spending 90% of her time at home either sleeping or wishing she was. She started the laundry and picked things up that she simply hadn't had the time or energy to tackle during the work week. Her plan was to let the guys go to the park while she stayed home and finished what she needed to get done. By the time the first load was done in the washer, she'd finished with all the picking up and reminded Mark to unload the dishwasher. She moved the load to the dryer and started another load, then went to take a shower. As she stood under the spray of hot water, her brain slowly came to life. Coffee had helped, but nothing worked quiet as well as a good shower, especially with what she considered her morning shower shampoo. The rosemary mint scent was energizing and helped her brain come to life. She loved the scent, but it didn't work for evening showers, so she kept a different scent for when she took her shower before bed. She let the water beat down on her back and shoulders for several minutes, enjoying that she could take the time today. Once she was dressed and ready to face the day, she sat down at the kitchen table to tackle the to-do list that she'd been building during the week. She ticked off the couple things she'd already finished and was surprised to find the list wasn't as long as she'd thought. All that was left was the laundry, to finish the dishes, and start a book she needed to read so she could keep her certification. Feeling like she had a handle on things, she got up to load the dishwasher. There weren't nearly the number of dishes she'd been expecting. She frowned at the sink for a moment, wondering if Mark had decided to be sweet and load them for her, then she realized they hadn't been eating here much. Zack had cooked every night and had fed Mark most mornings too. That meant fewer dishes for her. Donnie lay on the blanket Zack had laid on the grass for them to eat on. The meal was long over, and everything but the blanket had been packed away. Mark was off playing with some kids on the playground equipment, and she was trying to read the study guide so she could pass the quiz for her CTEs. What are you reading? Zack asked after a bit. He'd been sitting nearby quietly and try as she might, there was no way she could ignore him. It's a study guide for a quiz I need to take. She rolled over so she lay on her back 
and she held the lightweight book over her head so she could continue reading. Continuing education? She lowered the book and looked at him a moment. You have it too, don't you? Yeah, but I'm sure it's different. How so? Donnie looked up at him, where he sat nearby. I have certain classes the school wants me to take on different things, but not things like this. He lifted the study guide from her hands, careful not to lose her spot, and looked at it. Come over here a second. Donnie spun, still lying on her back so her head was closer to him. What? Nothing, I just wanted you closer. She set her head on his leg and gazed up at him a moment, remembering having done something similar many times in the past. After a moment, she took her book back and continued to read. Zack ran his fingers through her hair. At first Donnie froze, wondering what he was doing, but she soon realized he wasn't watching her. Instead, his attention was on Mark. He watched as the boy played with several other kids on the playground, while his fingers absently ran through her hair. They had done this a lot when they were teenagers, and she had something to study. It was a little distracting at first, but she soon realized she'd missed it. Content Mark was taken care of, she went back to studying.